What's up, everybody? It's uh, April 18th, 2021. I am just now getting around to kind of uh, working in the shop a bit. Uh, I'm still getting through editing some of the hunts from last year, but um, I'd already done a bit of bow work this year. Uh, the bow I've been shooting for the last year is a bear species. Yeah, I ended up just broke the cam on it, so I'm waiting on parts to come in. So I decided I was going to go ahead and uh, first I had to clean up my shop so I can actually use the place. But I'm pulling back out my uh, kind of old reliable. This is my uh, Matthew Switchback XT. I bought this brand new in 2008. Um, and I shot all the way up to uh, 2020. It, uh, I mean, I got so many good memories bow with this bow. I killed my first big buck with a bow with this. Uh, my first sick of deer uh, went out west, shot an antelope with this. I mean, just shot more animals than I can remember. Um, you hear a lot of guys when they talk about old Matthews bows that uh, the Switchback XT is one of the favorites. But it, uh, I mean, I can't, I can't disagree. It was single cam, you know, kind of like the the peak of the day when the Matthews flow still had solo cam in it. You know, uh, the only thing I've had to do over time, aside from a whole lot of strings, has been uh, I replaced the limbs once like five or six years ago. I had a, uh, we were quite certain it was a superficial scratch, but the warranty covered it. Um, they just treated it as it being a broken limb, the warranty covered it. So I got a new set of limbs then, and uh, just for making a funny squeak out of the top, like axle, uh, two years ago, and it was it just got taken apart and cleaned. I mean, just all the years of, uh, it's been used, it's for certain. So last year I took this, I got a new set of strings on it. I've never, two years ago, and I haven't, that was the same year I bought the bear. So it, uh, it really haven't been shot a lot. I did some playing around with some tuning and stuff in that first set, and uh, I'd separate the serving, so I went ahead and last year I tied a new serving on. You can see that is uh, BCY.18 power grip. Uh, but I tied the serving on, I never touched it again. So um, I figured this would be a decent chance just to do a video of, of how I uh, tie my knock, knock sets, uh, D loop, and tune it. Um, but this is also pretty, aside from the fact that the peep's already on there and you got a little bit of a serving, then you can get coming off of a, a standard bow. Uh, this is kind of similar to if you just ordered yourself a bow to your house. Like it doesn't, they typically don't come with a loop or anything like that. Or if you just bought it blank from a, from a shop. So this is the kind of stuff you'd have to do to start. So I'm sitting here, I'm trying to move this camera around correctly so uh, you can see the angles of it and whatnot. And uh, we're going to get to it. So when you first get to fooling with it, before you start trying to do arrow squares and things like that, you need to make sure you have your rest mounted correctly. I cannot tell you the frustration of when you go ahead and you square this and level it and everything like that and then you go ahead and uh, go to start tuning and you realize that it was not seated correctly so this uh, this bow only has one uh, burger hole so one bolt actually holds the rest to it uh, the two are kind of nice just because it has to be square but I just kind of did my best to make sure it's squared up to the riser there um, and just make sure it's tight to start because trust me, it's, it's a terrible feel when you take your time and do all this and you didn't have the rest square to begin with. So I see people start this a lot of different ways. You see a lot of stuff on the internet where people act like it's an ultimatum, like you have to do this, you have to do that. Um, it's really not the case. It's, it's kind of a lot of trial and error figuring out what works correctly for you. Uh, and that's kind of what motivates me to start making these videos because I've spent a lot of time watching tuning videos. Uh, some of them are great, some of them just make you even more confused. So. Now that I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna tie this knock set in, I put in a vise here. I've got a, uh, it was called it's a last chance archery vise. It's the cheapest one you can buy, um, which it works good enough uh, for its purpose. So uh, I want to set my knock point uh, on a single cam bow. They used to always say set this an eighth high, eighth inch high above zero, um, or above perfectly level, and I've had it like that a lot. I've had it closer to level. I've had a sixteenth high. Um, just you kind of get in that ballpark and then go from there with tuning. Now, one thing about it is I want to be pretty good because this is a, a the most basic whisker biscuit that doesn't adjust up or down. So if I'm off, I have to redo the knock everything to uh, get it to work. Like I have to, uh, I can't just adjust the rest down to change my knock point. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm coming to square it, and this is your standard, the cheapest T square you're gonna buy, like a couple of bucks. So once you drop it in here, you kind of got to fiddle with it in a whisker biscuit a little bit to make sure it's sitting flush. 
make sure you're actually clipped on here level. That's about it right there. So on this these type of T squares, you'll see they have uh, these two lines, which is supposed to be at 90 degrees to that. Uh, the problem you get, I'll see if I can demonstrate this with a, uh, a bear shaft, is this actual bar itself is slightly bigger than an arrow. So because it's slightly bigger than an arrow, where that tells you is 90 is really, uh, or is level, it's actually about like a 16th high. So I'm going to go ahead and tie the top, my top knock set just at the top of that line. Now for doing this, I got a couple of different things I was debating on using. I mean, the simplest is this is BCY knock point thread. I think when they sell it, it's actually called knock point peep tying thread. Um, I've used this before. I've used a regular BCY power grip, which is what I use for center serving. This is the .21, which is too big for most servings for me personally. But uh, I can't remember if I used this last year, if I did the knock tying thread. I've done regular 1.8 power grip, the same as what the serving is. But you want, uh, what I've gathered is you want the, your serving to be bigger than, or your, whatever thread you use to tie a knock point, you want it to be bigger than your center serve. You don't want it to be smaller. So I think I'm going to go with this BCY knock point this time. So moving in here, I'm going to tie just a basic overhand knot right where the top line of that is. Right, so I'm going to hop back in here, go right to the top of that line, and I'll just do regular overhand knots. I see some guys do double wraps and whatnot. Um, it doesn't... Uh, the double wrap makes it movable, and which is cool, except like anything you ever make movable, it's going to end up moving. So I'll just have better luck doing single knots. You want to try to remember what way you're going over because if you do it different one time uh, you'll be able to tell so you want to whichever end you're going over is what you, you want to keep doing that way right. now that i got that started what i'm gonna do is Bear shaft just happens to be the air I got sitting here. Set that lightly on there. I'm gonna go back with a set of basic levels. Even if you haven't worked on your own bow before, you've probably seen a shop using these. It's the basic snap one on the arrow, one on the bow. That is very, 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 very barely knock high, which is about what I was going for. So you can see here that bubble's touching the back of the line while this one is level, which is right about where I want to be. I'm personally a big fan of double and triple checking a bunch of things, and uh, that's one of the ways right there. So now I'm just going to keep the overhand knots. You got to watch doing this stuff. You do it a lot, especially if dry, when your hands are dry, it just like splits your fingers. Two. 
too. Let's so crank this third one down. I'll try to leave just a little bit of a gap. Because that's how I'm going to anchor it on this next one. So that's three over and unders on each side. I'm going to come in here. And where I just left that gap on that last one, I'm going to tie my fourth into that. Trying not to flay my hands open. Do a second knot right on top of that. Man, that's my top top knock set is done. So now I'm gonna move into I'm gonna transfer it over to the bow vise just because it's gonna be a little easier to do bottom knock set with that. Alright, so I've moved over here to my bow press. I know I just said vice, I meant press. Um, I'm not really trying to press the bow. I don't really want to add any touch to the bow. I'm just getting it to hold here. Um, the reason is it just tends to be a little easier to tie and working downward. Plus, I have uh, a little bit better light here to see. Uh, another thing you'll see a lot of people do, and I've done before too, is if you know your, your press is, is level, um, you'll see guys just line up the, put an arrow on there and just see when it free hangs in there. Like this one is just slightly hanging to the top part of the whisker. Uh, of the whisker biscuit so it means i'm just barely um knock high and people just get a starting point like that which would be cool uh, especially if you have an adjustable rest uh, but like i said this one doesn't so i really want to make sure i'm correct the first time so now that i'm here i still have these tag ends from the knot i just tied take a razor blade let's go get my bear shaft out the way Take a razor blade, cut these off. You'll see a lot, especially if you buy a cheap lighter, it'll like to puff right after you light it. So light it and let it get going correctly. Don't you don't want it to puff right when you're holding down here on the string. But you always want to burn with the flame above the string, not underneath. So I'm just gonna bring it down to it. A second tap it and that's that that's the top knock set done we'll go ahead and snap this arrow back on what I want the arrow on for is going to be knock fit so when I tie this bottom set I want to make sure it's not too tight to my top set I will say it's unless you have a really long draw length, I guess I'm a 28 inch draw length. Um, I really don't see a giant difference. I used to see it a lot when I shot aluminum arrows with uh, metal knock points. You'd really see knock pinch be a big deal on those big old Easton knocks. Um, but smaller knocks, shorter draw length, I, I really don't see it a lot. But um, I do like to leave a little gap. If you sit there and do something like leave a, uh, a 16 inch gap, with that kind of a draw length, uh, you'll find that when you hit full draw, you can still move the arrow up and down. Which you don't want it to be that dramatic. You see, I'll leave just enough that it wiggles. And that's all through the year I'll check to see that my servant hasn't separated or anything. I just put knocks on and wiggling. The other knock I also use, I have a lighted knock right here. The nocturnal, which tend to be a little shorter. Make sure that's also going to be fine. Get the top one in. Same thing as before. Try to make sure I'm tying the same direction every time. If we switch my workbench was like three inches shorter.
come around to the third set, I'm going to leave a slight gap. You don't want too much of a gap because as soon as you put pressure on a D-loop the first time, it's going to close the gap for you. Seems like they're talking to Ty, it almost went not the same direction as I had been. Come down for that last one. And that knock set is also done. So I got just a little bit of play in it. Just like before. Take a razor blade. Air out the way. That is it. That is a set of knock sets. Alright, so now that I've got the knock set on, we're going to go D loop some BCY material. Uh, I'll just buy it from Lancaster. It's like a dollar. Um, I can't remember if it's a dollar a foot. What is it? It's cheap. Just, if you're going to start working on bows, buy a lot of it because you go through a lot. Most loops you need like four and a half, five inches of cord that you really want to cut. I don't know, six, seven, eight inches so you got something to actually hold on to. Especially starting off, you don't want to cut them too short. It seems to be a habit to cut them too short. And once you cut it too short, you've essentially wasted those couple inches. So, what I do, fluff it up. You kind of just want to, you don't really want to burn it. People act, people act like don't get the flame on it at all, but it seems like unless you got a blowtorch, you kind of got to get the flame on it. Get it melting down. You'll kind of see it'll want to take a shape, which you want it to be more round than anything, obviously. So you kind of just keep hitting the sides, getting burn around and keep it nice and round. Now when it's nice and hot like this, you don't want to mash it right off the back so it'll kind of get gooey. So you let it cool for a second. And tap it. So now I've got one side burned like I like. Take a little bit of wax. nice cheap boning wax put around the end my burnt angst I already know a knot's gonna go there whether that actually makes a difference or not I have no idea but that's what most people do so that's what I do now when I tie this loop I want the top knot to be facing you want the burnt end to be on the outside of the loop and I want the top for the top knot I want it to be facing away from my face whether it actually matters or not I don't know but I can't remember where I saw to do it that way, so I've always done it that way. It's my first one of these for the year, so I'm a little rusty. It's all good. Probably with my shop because I just cleaned it. You know, once you clean something, you can never find anything. Let's see where I got my knock pliers that around here. drawer I forgot I got so different ones like this set of uh, 
it's a set of Easton's. They're designed that you can wrap it and really get to pulling this one tight. You want to pay attention to where your uh, peep's at here. Like I know this peep's going to rotate left slightly. It's just how right hand seal cam bows tend to be. And I'm going to take my time. I really want this knot to be tight. We got that in. Be about right. I never remember which way to go underneath, but uh, as you get to mess with it, there's really only one way it works. <laughs> so you just kind of mess with it. the big thing is this has to be your bottom one's going to need to be the opposite of your top one, obviously. So now I see I definitely at least gave it enough length this time. I'm gonna try to guess where that knot's gonna be and do a little bit of uh, wax on it. Again, people say it makes a difference. I have no idea if it does or not. Uh, most loops you wanna be, uh, they say between like five A's, three quarter of an inch. It it really depends. It depends on what kind of release head you're shooting, what kind of draw length you have. A bow like this is a fixed 28 inch draw length. So like if I switch to one of these, a shorter release head style like this Scott, um, versus like an older Scott without a forward trigger, it um, it's going to shorten the draw length a little bit. So, without buying new mods for it, I'm going to have to adjust the loop. Is how I'm going to control that. So, uh, I used to do really small loops on this, like a half inch. I'm not going to go quite that short this time. Probably be closer to an inch. That's also going to be a little experiment because I didn't have uh, I didn't have this release last time I set this bow up. Sorry, right, I just sit there and forget how which way to go. I do it almost every time, just like there. But once you got the top knot down good, it's it's not difficult to set the bottom one. You just uh, make sure you're the opposite. If it doesn't look right, just undo it and try <laughs> try a different. Now, I see guys that'll set their loop length to the exact point they want it, cut it, burn it, tighten it, and it stays right there. It never does that for me. It always stretches a lot, it seems. I'm sure it's something I'm doing wrong. I used to run really, really short loops on this boat, like a half inch. Like I said, that was a different release, and I wasn't tying knock sets in. It seems like if you run it that short, it really puts a lot of pressure on those knock sets, which I don't like. So... If you want to be a little more precise, you could break out a pair of calipers or something and make sure you're hitting it exactly where you want it to be. I'm not going to go quite that hardcore here. So an eyeball, that's probably three quarters of an inch. I know it's going to stretch a little bit once I tighten it. Again, I'm going to grab these. Try to get this pulled tight and pinched up nice before I start burning and stretching it. Careful not to punch myself in the face with this. That's about where I want that to be. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off with, I don't know, maybe a... Hmm, about three-eighths of an inch on there, I guess. You want it to be enough for you to be able to fuzz it up and burn it. Because if you don't cut it enough, obviously you can't really add length to it right now. So... Not quite as easy as the top knot since you have to do it on the bow, but it's the same premise. Go ahead and fuzz it up. Right where I left my lighter. Make sure you're above it. Let that cool. 
pool a little bit. I want to give it a second before I crank it. Make sure that knot is tucked nice and cool so it doesn't try to stretch out on me. So these are Easton D-loop pliers, archery pliers. I'm not sure the technical name. But you can see they got this hook on them. It's just for this, just for stretching D-loops. So I'll try to do this slow. Because I really want to make sure that my knots aren't trying to separate. If you just crank it, your knots will try to separate in the middle, which I don't want. doing kind of slow steady pressure if you crank this too hard you're going to separate your serving if you don't take it hard enough you might punch yourself in the face the first time you shoot it so you got to kind of find that balance that appears to be it right there i'm still moving around a little bit and that is it That is a finished knock set and D-loop. Now we'll see if I punch myself in the face first time I draw it back. All right, so now that I've got that, uh, I've got my loop, my sets, all that, I'm gonna just go ahead and shoot this through paper real quick and see where we're at. So I'm gonna use one of these, uh, you know, 30 odd six outdoors, they're like paper tuning kits. It's, if you don't have a paper tuner, you need to just rig something up. It's kind of the cheapest, simplest way to go. I got a bunch of scrap wood. I'm trying to sit here and build something a little more permanent and sturdy. But in order to get the height I need, I have a workbench. I shoot a bag target on in here all the time. I And yes, I have shot through and hit the wall a bunch too. Uh, I've got some, just some of my old styrofoam fish coolers. My arrow case laid across it to make it flat. And that just gets me up high enough. You don't want to shoot downward. You want to try to be shooting as low as you can. But just pop in one of these paper inserts. I'm gonna back up a couple feet and shoot. I'm in desperate need of fletching some arrow hose, so I only got I have one bear shaft and one uh, three fletch. So let's shoot a couple through real quick, see how it's looking. Oh, I don't have the sight on here, so hopefully I don't shoot the frame. Very slight right. Grab that, shoot that again. Get a very ain't that much. But a little bit of a right. I'm going to add a little bit to the left of this rest and shoot it again. So I just went ahead and bumped it over like a maybe a sixteenth to the left. I'm actually so far over on it. That I don't know how well you can see it. I wasn't even on the marks yet. Um, but let's see what she does. Mighty close. So I have to be almost tail high. That is mighty close. Shaft 
That is close. That is really close. So as you can see what I got here, uh, these are my initial a clear tail right. Uh, very slight tail right on this one, made that slight adjustment. It's not a right. Um, and here's the bear shafts. Uh, for most people, your whole process be done, your bow be set up for you. If you take your bow to a shop, um, for the most part, that's what you get. You know, And it's it'll probably be good. I could probably walk outside now. Well, it's pouring down rain and dark. But you could probably walk outside and a broadhead and a field tip fly pretty good. But we're gonna get crazy with this as time goes on. I'm gonna get a stretch outside, bear shafts, uh, 20, 30 yards, that sort of stuff. But in terms of just a quick throw the bow together tonight so that I can shoot it again, I'm, I'm very pleased. Um, feels good. I can see the D loop didn't try to separate it all. I've done a little playing around the peat. Um, just uh, don't get too hung up on uh. If you ever mess with the serving and D loop and stuff like that, it can adjust your peep a little bit. Uh, so you kind of want to let uh, let your peep get yourself settled before you start spinning your D loop too much to get the uh, to get it to line up with your peep rotation. So that's what I'm gonna wrap it for the night. Loop tied knock sets, um, paper tuned ish, and uh, we'll go from there. But that was pretty cool.